be useful. So if you have this guy, then you can go grab it now or a blanket that you can fold up and make something that's more or less the thickness of a ball. The other day I was using a soccer ball before I grabbed this from the studio. So a soccer ball works too if you happen to have one of those in your garage. And let us begin. Just making sure no one else is in the waiting room. I think we're good. Okay. Let's start on our backs. And feel free to, if you can hear my voice clear enough, and feel free to really not look at the screen. <laughs> um, let's start just with our palms up towards the ceiling. Take a moment to really open your chest, let your shoulder blades glide down your back. And for some of us already, this is gonna feel like a little bit of a stretch, especially if you spread your fingertips wide and open the palms of your hands. You'll go ahead and let your knees fall to the right. It's a gentle twist. And it doesn't matter if your knees come all the way to the floor. From here, we're gonna keep the legs nice and heavy. Go ahead and allow your body to keep turning to the right. As you bring your left arm up to the ceiling and close your arms like a book. And then we'll open the arms up and reverse that movement. So opening the front of the left shoulder, allowing your torso to rotate to the left and let's send your gaze into your left palm so your head completes that twist and that rotation. And again, allowing the legs to get heavy as the pelvis starts to rotate, opening that shoulder, closing the book, and then opening it back up, stretching through that left shoulder, rolling over to the left with your head, And one more time, rotating, legs get heavy, closing the book, and opening that shoulder, allowing your head to follow your fingertips as you turn to the left. And let's bring the legs center and go to the other side. So the knees get heavy over to the right. At first, my knees don't necessarily touch the floor, but then as I rotate through the pelvis, that starts to pull on my right arm. And then I start to close the book. And then I lead with the arm back. So my fingertips are leading me back and then my shoulders rotate and then my torso, and then my pelvis, and I can look into my right palm. And again, my pelvis goes first, rotating around, closing the book, and opening the fingertips, opening the shoulder. Good, keep going one more time. Pelvis pulls across the diagonal in our body, across the front of the torso. And opening the shoulder. And let's come to center. For most of us, that twist should feel really good in that rotation. We're gonna work in a lot of rotations today. So let's keep our palms wide as long as this feels okay on our shoulders. If not, you can bring your hands down by your sides, totally fine. We're gonna work on a little pelvic clock. So getting a little pelvis mo pelvic mobility here. Um, and basically we're just drawing circles with our, our hips and our sacrum. So it's a really small movement. It's kind of hard to see, I think, through the computer screen, but we're gonna start with a pelvic curl and most of us have done that. So you're pressing your low back into the mat. 
And then we're going to rotate the pelvis slightly to the left. And it's really small. It's really just you're allowing the weight of your pelvis to shift left. Then we're circling the pelvis around to our tail. And then over to the right, scooping through the belly, curling, finding that imprinted spine again, and shifting over to the left, and around to the tail, and over to the right, and scooping back into that imprinted spine. So keep circling around the sacrum. And just notice if you have any like sticky spots or sticky points. And if you do, try to smooth them out so that you're truly making an even circle around. This exercise is sometimes called pelvic clock because you're trying to imagine your pelvis as a clock and you're hitting every number on the clock. And when you're ready, let's reverse that circle. This is a really uh, great therapeutic exercise for anyone who has like tight hips or low back issues, just to start to notice where you might be stuck in your mobility um, and also start to turn on those little tiny baby muscles all around the pelvis. Let's take one more in this direction. Good. And then we're going to go ahead and allow the sacrum to find neutral. So it's right in the center of that circle, in the center of that clock. Go ahead and take your hands like a triangle, point your fingers together, thumbs together, and place that on your low belly with the palms of your hands more or less towards your hip bones and your point your finger toward your pubic bone. We're going to take an inhale. And as you exhale, start to pull all points of that triangle down and in. One more time, we'll inhale. And as you exhale, we're going to pull those points in without changing your neutral spine. So it should feel like you have a little space underneath your low back. Your sacrum is nice and heavy. One more time, inhale. This time as you exhale, pull the belly in, keep your neutral, float your right leg up to tabletop, and then rest it back down. Left leg comes up to tabletop, and rest it back down. See if you can keep that really solid neutral spine as you're marching. Good, keep going at your own pace, just making sure no one else is in the waiting room. If you're feeling good with this exercise, you can go ahead and bring both legs up to tabletop and march your legs one at a time. So you're tapping your toes, continuing to keep that connection deep into your low abs and into your neutral. Good, and then we'll rest our legs down. And go ahead and take your right leg up towards the ceiling. And for some of us, we have really tight hamstrings. So we're gonna bend the knee a little bit and then stretch it straight up. If you feel like you want a, a little assistance <laughs> with your stretch, you can grab onto the front of your pants or the back of your thigh. And we're just bending the knee and then stretching up. Bending and stretching. Trying to keep that neutral spine. So for some of us, our leg might be reaching out a little bit more of a diagonal. There we go. And then we're gonna keep that right leg up towards the ceiling. We're gonna lower it down couple inches off the floor, keeping that neutral, and then back up. 
So a little hover and then back up. And I personally really like to keep this little triangle on my low belly because it helps me remember to use my abs here rather than just my hip flexor. Good. Let's just go for three, two, and one. Go ahead and bend that knee in, hug it towards your armpit. Oh, give it a little squeeze, and then rest it back down. Left leg, we start by reaching it up towards the ceiling, little baby bend, and then reach it back up. So we're going for an active hamstring stretch here. We're not like holding the hamstring stretch. And again, if you need to hold onto your pants to help you make that stretch happen or the back of your leg, keeping that sensation of heavy sacrum as you extend through the leg. For three, two, one, keep that leg up. We're gonna lower it down a couple inches and then draw it back up. And potentially this movement can be done just by gripping through the hip flexor, but our goal this morning is to try to really gather all those deep low abs in to help lever the leg up. So it's, it's like a little teeter-totter. The heavier your sacrum can be, the easier it, can, it is to draw that leg up. Three, and two. Last one. Go ahead and draw that leg up, hug that knee deep towards your armpit. Uh, give it a little stretch, and then release the legs. So going back to our rotations and our circles through the pelvis. Now legs are gonna be in a tabletop position. And my arms are gonna press down at my sides because they might help me a little bit. Press your palms into the floor, open your chest, draw your belly button in. Squeeze your legs together. Yeah. And make sure your knees are more or less over your hip joints rather than towards your chest here. So that's gonna help you kind of keep a little neutral spine. We're gonna tip the pelvis slightly to the right, just a little bit so that you feel the right side of your sacrum weighted, and then draw a circle around the sacrum, down towards your tail, over to the left, scoop through your belly, and find that nice imprinted spine as you pass back over to the right. So we're doing our pelvic circles that we started with, but we're just making it a little bit harder now, adding that tabletop leg. And Go slow enough here so that, again, you can really feel like you're hitting every number on the clock. Just like we talked about earlier with pelvic clock, you wanna make sure that you're, you're not missing any of those times. Like for me, it's like the diagonal ones that are really hard, like the two o'clock or the five o'clock. And let's reverse. Left down to your tail, over to the right, scoop through your low belly, and then shift over to the left again. Yeah. And already we should be feeling some pretty deep low ab muscles turning on with this one. Now we're gonna shift our pelvis over to the right and we're just gonna keep it there. And again, it's not an extreme twist because then I, I lose my stability through my torso. I'm just kind of balanced on the right side of my sacrum. And I'm just gonna exhale and press my legs out away from me at a little diagonal and then draw them back in. Exhale and draw them back in. If this is feeling good to you, to make this a little bit more challenging, you take your hands back behind your neck and skull, and every time your legs reach out long, you're gonna curl up with your head. The 
Let's go for three, two, last one, and shift the legs over to the left just a little bit. Again, feel like it, the shift is happening more in your sacrum, not necessarily your knees or your legs, right? Because then you'll go too far. And we'll extend the legs and pull them back in. Nice. Good, if this is feeling okay for your low back, then we can go ahead and take the hands behind the neck and skull and add a little challenge. Curling up as you extend through those legs and drawing them back in. Let's go for three, and two, last one. Good, let's shift the legs back over slightly to the right, right? Just a little baby shift. The legs are gonna extend out, shift over to the left, and then pull back in. So we're shifting to the right, kick it up. Shift it over, pull it in. To make this harder, right, the legs will shift to the right, and as they extend, they go a little bit lower, right? You guys can probably see that if you're looking at the screen. Instead of my legs being up here, they shift low. And then they swoop to the left and pull back in. Shift to the right, reach it up, swoop it over, pull it in. Now, to make this even harder, you could Curl up through the head. You don't have to, but for those of you who are wanting it this morning, go for it. Now I find that when I'm twisting through my pelvis here, it's a challenge for my upper body, especially with my head up, to find some counter rotation. So that as my legs go left, my torso has to twist slightly to the right in order to stay stable through my shoulders. Okay, let's go the other way. Shifting to the left, reach the legs out, swoop them to the right, and pull the knees back in. Now, if you find having your head up is hurting your neck or just feels too challenging, rest the head down. This is a great option. I know for me, I still feel my low abs a lot here. Let's go two more. And one more. And draw it in. Pull your knees in with both of your hands and stir your knees around in opposite directions. Circling the femur around the hip joint, relaxing the low back, and reverse your circle. Great. Legs are going to come to a little froggy position. I know it's kind of hard to see. I'll turn this way a little. So a narrow V with your feet. Knees are turned out. Let's take our hands back behind our neck and skull this time. And as you exhale, we're going to scoop up through the belly, extend the legs, rest the head down, exhale, reach it out, squeeze those inner thighs together, right? I love the cue or the image of the heels being like magnets. So they're staying super connected. And you should feel here that you're really solid in your neutral spine so that you're not tucking the tailbone. You can feel that heaviness of the tail, heaviness of the sacrum as you exhale. Let's scoop up, hold, add a little open of the legs, a little close, and then rest it down. Scoop up. Open, close, and rest it down. Scoop up, open, close, and rest it down. Two more. 
One more. And rest it down. Nice. Go ahead and take your right leg up to the ceiling and extend your left leg out long. So similar to what we, um, what we were feeling earlier in class when we were uh, lowering the leg and lifting it with our low belly. So we're gonna go for some scissors here using that same concept, that same sensation in the body. Float your left leg one inch off the floor and go ahead and scissor the legs, coming to a little hover with that right leg. And scissor. Go slow at first so that you can really feel, I, I don't know about you guys, but my low abs, when I scissor my legs with my head down, they are like super turned on, <laughs> super solid. Now, if you feel your hip flexors taking over here, just soften the knees a little bit. Totally fine. Good. Now we're going to pick up the pace and we're going to scissor, 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 scissor. To make this a little harder, hands go back behind the neck and skull. And we add a little upper ab scoop, holding here. Scissor, 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 scissor. Keep going for eight, seven, six, five, four. Keep your neutral. Two, one. Pull those knees in, rest the head down. Take a little rock side to side. And let's plant the feet down into the floor in line with your sits bones. Nice flat feet. Feel your arms pressing into the floor, your palms pressing into the floor. We're going for neutral bridge. So the whole, all 10 toes are pressing into the floor and the whole outer edge of the foot is pressing into the floor as you lift up and down. Trying to stay neutral, up and down, up and down, wake up those hamstrings and those glute muscles, up and down, nice. You can also think of this as a hip flexor stretch too. So that as you go up, you're trying to engage your backside in order to open up those hip flexors. Let's go for six and five. And four, and three, and two. Last one, keep it up there. Good, connect your ribs. If this hurts your low back, lower down a couple inches, it's fine. It can be almost like halfway up. And we're gonna go ahead and lift our heels up now. So I'm coming onto the balls of my feet. Yeah, and then I wanna See if I can pull my torso slightly towards my heels without like shifting anything around. So I'm just using my hamstrings to do this baby little, it doesn't take much. I'm just grabbing with the backs of my legs. Then I'm gonna roll down through my spine. <sighs> keep your heels up, keep pulling your booty towards your heels and then lower the heels down. Let's try that again. We go up in neutral, lift the heels up. Gently pull the torso towards your heels. Oh, use your hamstrings. Then roll it down. Oh, and lower the heels. Should feel like a good challenge. Here we go, up in neutral. Lift those heels up. Little baby, pull towards your heels. Use those hamstrings. Roll it down one vertebra at a time. Oh, and then lower the heels. Last time, up we go. Lift those heels up, pull at the backs of those legs, and slowly roll it down. Keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep going, keep going, keep going, and lower the heels down. Nice. Let's go ahead and extend both legs out long. Use your hamstrings that you just found to press your heels into the floor here. So the whole back of the leg is, is working. Arms go up to the ceiling. We're gonna send the fingertips back. Big stretch here through the torso. Inhale and exhale. Here we go, we're rolling it up. Fingertips go first. Scoop the head up, curl through the belly. Roll all the way up. Oh my gosh, let's find a hamstring stretch. 
after using those hamstrings. And then inhale, sit up tall. Noise bend the knees a little bit here to really find your neutral spine as you're seated, lifting up tall. And then exhale, sweep through the belly, roll it back down. Fingertips reach back, inhale. Exhale, fingertips go forward, roll it up. Reach over your legs, little hamstring stretch. Inhale, lift it up tall. Exhale, scoop through the belly. Uh, one vertebra at a time. Reach the arms back. And exhale to roll it up. Hamstring stretch. Inhale, sit it up tall. Exhale, roll it back. Good, two more. Inhale. Exhale, roll it up. Big stretch. And big reach up towards the sky. Exhale, curl. Rolling back. Beautiful. Last time. Inhale, reach. Exhale, curl. And send it up towards the sky. We're going to stay here. Again, if you need to bend your knees in order to sit up tall on your sits bones, totally fine. Or if you have the hamstring flexibility, you could straighten your legs all the way. We're going to open the arms to the right and come into a little twist. So I'm trying to let my hip bones stay square. If I don't let them stay square, one leg gets longer than the other. So I want to keep my legs nice and even as I twist and open. Yeah, and then come back up, reaching tall. Twist the other way, let's exhale. Inhale, sit it up tall. So we're working on our posture muscles, which all of us need. Inhale, lift it up, exhale, twist. Inhale up. Now let your eyes follow your fingertips as you twist. And inhale, look forward. Exhale, twist. Look back towards your fingertips. Inhale, look forward. One more time in each direction. Exhale, twist. Inhale, up. And exhale, twist. And up. Beautiful. We're going to relax the arms down, gently bend the knees. Go ahead and find your ball or maybe your pillow that you have folded up so that we can rest on this pillow or ball right about at your mid spine. So I will say if it's too low, um, the exercise is easier. So if you feel your low back turning on at all, you can always like sneak that ball a little bit lower. I personally like to have it right below the bottom tips of my shoulder blades for a little challenge. Hands go back behind the neck and skull here. And I want to feel like I'm not collapsing in my low back here. Some of us, when we place a ball here, we find this position, we just immediately go into a tuck. Can you keep that sensation of your tailbone reaching just a little bit heavier? Not like an over-exaggeration, but just a little sensation of tailbone reaching long as you ugh, pull the belly in. Yeah. And then here, I'm resting on this pillow or this ball, but I'm not like totally just hanging out. So I have a little bit of a sensation that I want to lift off of that pillow or off of that ball. Okay? So from here, legs are going to come to a merch. So a little bit more challenging than when we were just laying on our backs. I don't know about you guys, but like immediately I get this little like earthquake happening like right around my rib cage, especially if I try to pull it inward instead of letting it pooch out. Use your breath here. Now, if having the um, ball here really just bothers your back, you can always get rid of it. And then we're going to go ahead and take our hands just gently behind the legs. And if you need to walk your feet a little closer in that spine, and I'm not really like pulling super hard with my arms, 
my, they're just like a baby assist as I do a little pulse. So I'm trying to lift up a little higher off of that ball or off of that pillow as I really pull in with my abs. That's the whole like objective here. So if you notice that your abs are like pooching out, right? Make it smaller, use your breath to really draw inward. And your arms can help you a little bit, but again, I'm not just using the arms. It's a different exercise. Let's go for three, two, one. Good, then take both hands over to the right. Yeah, and I'm doing the same thing, but now I'm in a little rotation. For four, three, two, one. I'm gonna try to stay scooped up a little bit. I'm gonna take my fists and as if I have a band to pull apart, my arms go apart and then they come back together. They go apart and then they come back together. Oh my gosh, I feel my obliques. Good. Again, if your hip flexors are really bothering you, and go ahead and walk your feet out a little bit. See if that changes how you're using your abs and your hip flexors. Almost there. Three and two and one. All right, right away we go over to the other side. Both hands to the outside of your left thigh and little baby pulses in. Two more. Now we're gonna stay slightly scooped up. Make your fists, pull your invisible band apart and bring it back together. Pull it apart and back together. Really draw the abdominal wall in and pull it in and draw it in. Okay, now I'm just being goofy. You guys get the point. Two more. Last one, and let's come back to center. Lean back on your ball a little bit. Yeah, extend both legs. Take your hands back behind your neck and skull, and allow your chest to open and your ribs to open. So we're finding a little stretch for our belly, little mobilization of the mid spine. Just taking a couple breaths, letting the chest open. One more breath. And we're gonna go ahead and curl back up and in. Let's bend the knees just slightly this time. So not a deep bend, but just a baby bend. Yeah, I'm gonna flex my ankles and really press my heels into the floor. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and come back just to about a little extension. So my ribs are still connected here. I'm not overextending over that ball, just a little baby extend, extension. And then draw the ribs together even deeper to gently curl up. So I go back and then I curl up. And to make this even harder, you would curl up higher off of your pillow or off of your ball. I'm never really losing the connection to the ball or the pillow on my back, but there's this um, play that I have in terms of how much pressure I put on that pillow or on that ball. For four, three, two, and one. Let's roll all the way up. Grab onto the backs of your legs. Walk yourself all the way up. Open your knees out for a little butterfly stretch. So feet together, knees apart. We're going to go ahead and walk the hands forward and just give our hips a little stretch for a moment, relaxing the head down. And then come on up. All right. So we're going to just 
toss that ball or that pillow off to the side. Swivel your legs around to all fours. Yeah. Find your neutral spine here. Really allow your knees to be underneath your hip joints, hands underneath your shoulders. We're gonna draw our shoulder blades down so the neck is super long. And then we're gonna tuck our toes. And we're just gonna float our knees up one inch. You guys know I like this position. It just really helps me wake up all those stabilizer muscles in my belly and in my back. And then rest the knees back down. Notice if when you lifted the knees, you had a tendency to just kind of curl into your low back. See if you can keep that sensation of reaching the tailbone long, pulling the low belly in, and then rest the knees back down. Draw your shoulder blades down again. Lift your knees up and down. Up and down. Here we go for eight and seven and six and five, four, three, two. Last one, we're gonna hold it. Stay here. I will say the lower your hover, the harder it is. So if you find that you're up here, woo, come down to that little baby hover. And we're just gonna gently rock forward a couple inches and then back. Going forward and then back. And it's like your back is a table that slides, right? So it doesn't tip, it just slides forward and back. You should feel your arms, your belly, your legs, whole body exercise. Keep going, almost there. For three and two, last one. Lower the knees down. Let's come down to our bellies right away. Reach your arms down by your sides, palms face down. Legs are slightly separated. Pull that belly in, draw your shoulder blades down, reach your chest forward and up. Just a baby lift here, right? So trying to think of your body getting longer rather than just bowing up. And then just rest the head down. You can turn your cheek one way. And lifting the chest forward and up. Get long, get long, get long. And turn your cheek the other way. And reaching out and up. And rest your cheek down. Think of those shoulder blades continuing to pull together and down, together and down, together and down. And turn. And lifting up. And turn. Now we're gonna add the lift of the arms. So as I lift my chest and get long, my arms float off the floor, and then I turn the other way. Reaching out and up. Lift the arms and turn your head. Reaching out and up. Pull your belly in. Make it an abdominal exercise. And reaching out and up and turn. Okay, we're gonna add on to this. Again, if this hurts your back at all, you can make it really small, like a little, like, like the tiniest little lift, and really work on pulling your belly button in, like you have a little ice cube underneath you. So we're gonna lift up. Here we are, hip bones and pubic bone all pressing evenly into the floor. Arms are up. Now I'm gonna open my arms up to a T position. Already, this is uber challenging. Yeah, nice. And then the arms are gonna reach up to a nice wide V and the thumbs rotate towards the ceiling. Notice if your shoulder blades had a tendency to wanna to sneak up to your ears, see if you can keep pulling them down, pull your ribs together, pull your belly button in, oh my gosh. And then open those arms back out to a T and back down towards your hips. We're gonna keep the back up. Here we go, arms open out to a T. Out to your wide V, out to a T, and down towards your hips. One more time, out to your T, up to your wide V, down to your T, 
and then down towards your hips. Rest your head down, rest your chest down. Okay, we're going for dart next, and then we'll give our backs a little break. So bring your legs together this time. Squeeze them together. This is a, a hard one, just letting you guys know ahead of time. So we're gonna try to get our palms of our hands to press into the sides of our legs or into your hips. Loop your shoulders down and around. Lift your chest. Squeeze your arms as much as you can to your legs, to your sides. Pull your belly in, squeeze your legs together, and float your legs up. So you're trying to squeeze everything in towards your midline. Hold it for three, two, one, and relax. All right, we're going to find that position right away again. Here we go. Up you go. Squeeze it in towards your midline. Squeeze your arms, squeeze your legs. Get long, 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 long. For three, two, one, rest. Oh, last time. Here we go, turning our bodies into a dart. Up we go. Pull those shoulder blades together. Let your neck be long. Draw your abs in a little deeper. For three, two, one, rest. Take your hands underneath your shoulders. Gently press back into a child's pose. Stretch your back out. Okay, so a little sideline series. Let's come on to our left elbow. And we're gonna go ahead and line our feet up with our sits bones. So rather than your knees being lined up with your sits bones, your feet are lined up with your sits bones. Knees are slightly forward. Yeah. From here, we're gonna go ahead and extend the top leg out, and the top leg is going to be in line with my ear. We're just going to do a little lower and lift. As you lift your leg up, make sure that you're keeping long in your top waist, right? So that you're not collapsing through the torso at all as that leg lifts up. So let's go a little bit faster for eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, one. Keep that leg up. Turn the toes down. Yeah. So the leg starts at hip height, and we're going to go for little baby pulses up, 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 up. Lead with your heel. Draw your belly in. Don't collapse in that top waist. Four, three, two, one. One. Now, my toes stay turned in. They come forward in a little diagonal to touch the floor, and then they go back in a diagonal as my heel lifts up. Forward in a little diagonal, back in a diagonal. Forward and back. You should feel your butt. If you don't feel your butt, I just don't even know what to tell you. Yeah, keep going. Good. Let's just go for four and press it back. Three, lift it up as you go back. Two, lift it up. Oh my gosh, one. Now we're gonna keep it up into the back. Oh my gosh, I'm so cruel today. We're gonna do little baby circles up and around up and around, just about the size of a tennis ball. For three, two, one, reverse it. Up and around, up and around, up and around. For three, two, one. Take it all the way down. Nice work. Come all the way down onto your waist. This is like the TV popcorn watching position. If this bothers your neck, you can always rest your head all the way down. No worries. Knees stacked on top of each other, and we're just going for a little clamshell. Opening the top knee and closing it. Open and close. Open and close. Make sure your hips stay stacked right on top of each other so there's no temptation to like roll the hips open. Nice. 
You can keep going with this version or to make it a little more spicy, you could lift the feet up and allow the feet to stay floating as you open your top knee. Wherever you're at, we're going for four, three, two, one, lower it down. Awesome, come all the way up, grab onto your ankle with your right hand and take a big stretch through the left side. Let's swivel the legs around and do that on the other side. So I'm on my right elbow. I'm lining my feet up with my sits bones. Yeah. I'm staying nice and uh, neutral and square, sending that top leg out. We're gonna go ahead and just go for a little lower lift. Lowering and lifting. Starting to wake up that left booty. Four, three, two, one. Now keep it at hip height. Rotate that leg in a little bit so the toes are pointing towards the floor. Little baby pulses up, 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 up. Oh my gosh, up, <laughs> up, up, up for four, three, two, one. Now we go for that little diagonal so the toes come forward, they touch the floor. And then you reach back and up with your heel. You touch and back and up. Yeah. Getting all of our balance muscles to really fire. Just be careful not to collapse in your back at all so that you really feel like you're staying strong through your torso, your belly's in, you're long through your spine. Keep going, oh my gosh. For four. Three, two, almost there. One, we're gonna keep it back. Little baby circles, up and around, up and around. Keep your toes pointed in. Four, three, two, one, reverse it. Up and around, up and around. Keep it slightly to the back. Make sure it hasn't drifted to the front. For four, three, two, one. Oh my gosh. Oh. Okay, coming down to your popcorn position and clamshells, opening that top knee. Just really solidifying that glute connection. Make sure your hips are staying nice and square here. Yeah, and to add that challenge if you'd like, it's just an option. You can float your feet up and go for that extra movement through the hip and that extra challenge on your left glute. Let's just go for four, three, two, and one. Excellent, come all the way up, grab onto your ankle and give yourself a big stretch. Ah. Okay, we're gonna swoop the arms around, come back to all fours here. Go ahead and bring your right foot to the outside of your right hand. Yeah. We're gonna sneak our left leg back as we tuck the toes and extend it. Draw your belly in and allow your hips to drop two inches. So that gives your hip flexor a nice big stretch. Now we're gonna challenge our balance and our stability here. So shift your weight into your right foot. Really feel like your right leg is planted. Take your right hand to your right knee. Go ahead and come up to a lunge position. Reaching your left arm forward, your right hand is on your right knee to help you stabilize. Keep drawing your tailbone down. Big stretch for that left leg. And a strength challenge for your right leg. Now we're just going to send the uh, left arm up and forward. Left arm up and forward. Stay, stay low if you can for three and two and 
One, circle that arm back, open the front of your left shoulder, and then sweep it all the way down to the floor. Plant your left hand and open your right arm so you're twisting to your right leg. Look up towards your right fingertips. And bring both hands down, lower your back knee. Go ahead and sneak your right leg back and we'll switch sides. Left foot comes to the outside of your left hand. Tuck your back toes, straighten your right leg, lower your hips two inches, pause here. Find that nice deep psoas stretch, hip flexor stretch that you found on the other side. And then we add this stability challenge. So you're shifting your weight over to your left leg. Left hand comes to your left knee. Okay, so you're gonna use your glutes, your belly, your back, everything we've been warming up and strengthening this morning to lift your torso up. This should increase the stretch a lot in the front of your right hip. And if you're feeling good with this, we can send the right arm up and down. Up and down. Pull your belly and drop your tailbone. Lift up out of your pelvis with your muscles, with your torso. Okay, last one. That arm goes up. We circle it around, opening the front of your right shoulder. Look back towards those fingertips. And then swoop the arm down to the floor. Both hand, or sorry, right hand comes down. Twist and open the other way, looking up towards your left fingertips. And bringing that left arm down. Lowering your back knee, bringing your left leg back. Let's go ahead and just do a little cat back stretch. Rounding the spine. Oh, feels so good. And extending the spine, heart and tail reach away from each other. Scoop into your belly. Use your breath, exhale. Inhale to reach long. Exhale to curl. And inhale to reach long. One more time. Exhale, curl. And inhale to reach long. Okay, we're dropping down to our forearms. Almost there, you guys. Just a couple more minutes. So, palms are flat, forearms are underneath your shoulders. We're finding our forearm plank. Sending one leg back. And the other leg back. Squeeze your legs together. Make sure your pelvis is in line with your torso. Make sure your head is in line with your torso so it's not jutting forward. Yeah, nice. And we're just going for little knee touches. So I'm lowering my right knee, and then it comes back up, and then my left knee, and then my right, and then my left. So I'm not moving my pelvis at all. I'm trying to keep that strong, strong neutral as I lower right and left, right and left. Keep going, four, four, breathe, three, three. Get long through your neck, two, two, one, one. Beautiful, lower your knees down and press back into a child's pose. Let your torso fall between your legs. Nice, rolling up through the spine. We're gonna end with a little seated rotation. So you can either be on your knees here. This is one option. You can be here. I'm gonna be cross-legged, but if this doesn't work for you, you can just sit on your knees. We're gonna go ahead and reach the right arm up to the ceiling. Yeah, take the left arm, reach it slightly back behind you. Go ahead and twist as you sit up tall. So I'm only gently using my arms to help me twist around. I'm not cranking through the spine. 
I'm really trying to just get tall and lifted up out of the torso. As I twist, you can look over the left shoulder. And gently unwind the spine, come back to center. Left arm reaches up. Right arm reaches slightly behind you. Bring your left hand to your right knee or to the outside of your right thigh if you're on your knees. And lifting up tall as you twist. Looking over your right shoulder. Gently using your arms, but mostly trying to pull the navel back towards your third lumbar as you twist. And let's unwind the spine and end with three big full breaths. Inhale and exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last breath. Inhale. Exhale. Thank you all so much for showing up this morning. Really appreciate seeing you 